Today, we're going to visit with Ann Ryan, who's one of our seasoned optimal EFT practitioners from Ireland. Say hello. Say hello, Ann. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gary. Hi. Um, and our topic is the benefits of asking, of consistently asking the unseen therapist. It's a little, we're going to ask Ann to talk about an ex really an exceptional experience he's had and we'll explore that some but the the idea here is as you start to get more engaged and more training and more practice with the unseen therapist it's one thing to start asking well what's really behind this particular ailment it saves a lot of time and so on uh, you could even ask should i buy these peaches or those bananas today if you wanted to and that would be the unseen therapist becoming more of a companion and ever present source of wisdom for us Anne is somebody who has had at least one experience with that and she's going to tell us about it now did i say it right Anne? you said it very well gary well yes. give us your experience okay um a couple of days ago um i was getting ready to travel for the weekend to visit some people it was friday and I got a WhatsApp message from somebody I work with, um, a client, who I've seen for quite some years, dips in and dips out. And it was very unexpected because the message was, I've sent you an email in despair. That, that's all the WhatsApp said. I, it was unexpected from the person it came from. So I did my little bit of steadying myself with the unseen therapist, you know, just because of receiving this. And for some reason, more than I have ever done before, because I do communicate with her quite a lot, but more than I've ever done before. Her, the, her, her being the unseen therapist. Yes, I call her her. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, her being the unseen therapist. Uh, I was guided to keep consistently checking in. So when I got this message, besides you know just bringing a little bit of calm because this was unexpected, I said, you know, do I read the email now? I was packing my car to, to go. I, no, don't read the email yet. So I went on my journey. It was a two hour journey. Um, as I was going along after 30 minutes, you know, do I read the email now? About halfway there, it was like, okay, pull in at the next, you know, motorway station. And yes, now's the time to read the email. Um, I did, it was, it was, you know, it was lengthy, but there were words such as hopeless, despair, what's the point? That was the essence of the email. Yes. Um, and I said to the unseen therapist, do I respond? She said, not yet. I said, okay. And I... Well, let, let, let me stop you right there. Your ego, your, your training, your, 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 mm. your sense of what you should do is to, oh, I, I better get back to her right now because she's in... She might commit suicide. I mean, these are hmm. down and out words, hmm. but you're guided not to do what your normal conditioning would say to do. All right. So I, I'm just pointing that out. Okay. Yes. So yes. continue, please. Um, it continued like that. So I continued my journey. Um, and, and I would say, you know, do, do I reply now? No. Do I reply now? Eventually, a couple of hours later, do I reply? And I said, yes, now is the time to reply. And she said, send a short voice message on WhatsApp. That was, the, it was, I mean, the guidance was so clear. I was like, okay. So the guidance was so clear. But each step of the way, I never questioned it. Now, I'm not saying I don't sometimes go, are you sure? Do you not think you? But in this instance, I, I said, okay, that's what she said. That's what I will do. So I then sent a very, you know, brief minute, minute and a half message, really acknowledging what I'd heard, you know. And the, the, the guidance was just keep it general. Like, I mean, be loving, be compassionate, acknowledge. Um and tell her you're away for the weekend, you know, just to explain. So, what, so I did, left the message. Um, over the weekend, it stayed with me. And I would say, you know, I, I asked numerous times, you know, will I reach out? Will I, no, no, no. Every single time she said no. 
on Monday morning, I asked, I mean, this is Friday to Monday. On Monday morning, I asked, um, you know, will I reach out? And she said, yes, send a really short message. And I sent something along the lines of, I've been thinking of you a lot over the weekend, you know, and some nice heart emojis. Um, and nothing came back. And, and that is unusual because this person generally, when we message for appointments or anything, you know, is responsive. Um, and so nothing came back all day. That was Monday at 10 o'clock all day. And I kept checking in, you know, is this okay? I got the, this is okay. It's just, you know, it, it's what she kept saying was, it's something that needed an out. It needed an expression. And it's really important to give the space for it. That's what I kept hearing. So at five o'clock that evening, or maybe just after five o'clock, I got a message back saying, thank you for your lovely messages. I've just sent you an email. I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> and the email was titled Hopeful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, there was some detail in the email, but a couple of things had happened. Well, firstly, the guidance was completely as it needed to be. The second thing was there did need to be a venting and it happened to come in an email and it happened to, you know, be sent to me. Um, and the third thing was my not jumping into, you know, um, help or rescue or whatever, maybe that might be my inclination in the past. The process that it allowed this person I work with to find her way back to being hopeful which she really did all by herself over the weekend. Now, mm. I've got probably with unseen therapist help. Okay. Oh, well, yes, yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. But go ahead, please. Well, only to say, like, that was, those were the answers in those two or three days in that circumstance. Were the same thing to happen tomorrow? I don't imagine the answers would be the same. So I don't see it as like, oh, this is the roadmap for any time a situation like this happens, just to say. Yeah. yeah. But in this case, it was it was the clearest, consistent guidance I've ever got. It's the longest time I've consistently kept asking and kept going, okay, she says yes, she says no, she says not now, she said now's the time. Like, I... I mean, I have a lot of trust in the unseen therapist, you know, and I connect with her a lot for myself and for people I work with. Um, I've never had that prolonged period of time of having the patience and having the trust to go, okay, this is what she says this minute. And then I, I forget it isn't the word, but it will go out of my mind until an hour or two or three later. You know, now what yeah. do I need to do? Yeah. And the reality of all of this is clients can, and often to use your term, should work it out themselves. Okay. Yeah. That whatever happens, some, somebody, her, her spouse or somebody in her family says something to her, something else shows up in the meantime, whatever it is, she gets a, an aha that you had nothing to do with. It was unseen therapist knows was going to come along. I'm making all this up because there's so many things mm -hmm. that you and I don't know. Yes. Lots that we don't know. Unseen therapist does. Now, you use the word trust. The more you have experiences like this, and this is true with many of our students, the more we engage with the unseen therapist, the more we practice, the more we listen, and so on, the more trust we start to develop. It's a little difficult just for me to say, well, join our course and now trust the unseen therapist. That, yeah. You know, just do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to have a little input here and there, you know, a little experience yeah. here and there. Mm -hmm. And so now you've had not only individual experiences along the way, but now you've got one of consistently asking mm -hmm. and getting these results and saved you a lot of time, did it not? Yes, it did. And it gave it gave everyone the space they needed, it would seem. Including you and your vacation. Including me and my vacation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, you count here too, Anne. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, great story. I hope our I hope our listening audience, you know, gets the idea about how more practice and more engagement, et cetera, is going to develop more trust and more wisdom at our fingertips, which is really within us and so on. Anything more you wanted to uh, you wanted to say before we close up? Um only that I've tried to continue the not to do with that particular thing, but I've kind of it's opened my eyes even more than before. Um, and I've been having uh, some fun with the unseen therapist over the last day or two where, you know, it could be, what will I do first today? And like, there's a, there's a, she's throwing a lot of humor into things, which she does, you know, yeah, from time yeah, to time, yeah. but <laughs> it's, it's been lovely. It's been lovely. So uh, I hope to, yeah, I think it's brought me to something that I wouldn't have done had this not happened. All right. <laughs> Great examples, and really, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody wants to get a hold of you, by the way, your your contact information is right there below your neck, below your pretty face. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just remind everybody there are some essential links down below the the bottom of this uh, uh, you know this video. It'll take you to free newsletters and my free ebook to give you an intro to the unseen therapist, advanced training links, and all of that. So with that in mind, we will uh, see you next time.